This is Degaros MPC, Math, Physics, Computing, uh, 130 plus Masters and PhD level courses in Pure Mathematics and Math Physics. This is course number four, so MPC4, a uh, junior and senior level course on linear algebra. This is lecture two on the theme of uh, linear equations and session E. <laughs> now in the previous session uh, we talked about the idea of uh, elimination where you have two equations, two linear equations and you, you try to get rid of the first variable by, by eliminating it and the way you do that is uh, you, you, you look at your two equations and you so we'll talk about equation one and equation two uh, I need to concentrate a bit here it gets a bit subtle have a look at the coefficient of your first variable just call it call that first variable just x and uh, it's so it's that coefficient of your first variable it, it'll be it's in now it's in the first line it's the first equation so one equation per line or one line per equation so uh, the coefficient of your first variable in your first equation will be a11 okay and the coefficient of the first variable in other words x in your ith equation, your ith line, it will be a i1. Yeah. So, uh, so i the like the ith row, and one the first column. Okay. So, we want to make the coefficient these two coefficients. We want to make them equal. So, have a look at. So look at uh, the coefficient of the first variable in the first line. Now that's a11. Multiply it by a. The, uh, multiply the whole equation, the whole first equation, by a i1. And multiply the whole of the ith equation by a11. And the results you'll get, so you'll have two new equations. So the modified first equation, uh, the coefficient of the first variable, x, will be uh, ai1 times a11. And similarly, the coefficient of the first variable in your ith equation, your ith line, uh, it will be the same. It will be a11 one one times a i1. Okay? Now, uh, subtract the two, these two new, li two new lines, these two new equations, and since the coefficients of the first term, x, in both equations is the same, when you subtract them, you get zero. So in other words, the x is just dropped out. So the, the or the x one, if you like, it's no longer there. So in a sense, now you'll do you'll do that for each of the ith equations, the ith lines, except the first. You, you keep the first. The first you don't change. So. Um, So you, you, we, we will replace the second line by, uh, well, well, yeah, we'll do, make it in general. So replace the ith line by this equation. And might, that might seem a bit abstract. Where, where does this come from? So I'll try, I'll try to unpack it a bit. So um, in, instead of equation on the ith line, whatever it is, you replace that equation by this equation. And what's going on here? Well, this AI, where's that? That comes from your first line. 
right? That's that's the coefficient of your x or, or x1, the first uh, unknown, in in your first equation, and you're you're multiplying this number all through the ith line, li, or the the ith equation. Same thing, line equation, same thing, and and you're subtracting that from now this what's this coefficient it's the coefficient of your x you know, your first uh, unknown in your ith equation here yeah, your ith equation and uh, so you you're multiplying the first line all through you know all the terms by this coefficient by this this uh, number which is the coefficient of the first uh, unknown in the ith line or ith equation and and why are you doing that you know, why are you multiplying i by this and why are you multiplying the ith line by this so that the coefficients of your x in the first line and the ith line are the same so when you subtract those, when you subtract this equation from this equation, well, other way, uh, the coefficient in front of the x will be zero. You've, in other words, you've eliminated it. And and so whatever you get here, uh, replace this one by that, and do that for every line, from the second line down to the mth, because you've got m equations with n unknowns okay so you have now reduced so the the length of the equation has or in other words the number of uh, uh, unknowns in the equation has been reduced by at least one in in all cases you know all lines all equations except the first one keep 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 that so uh, here, here it is. So here's your, here's your first equation that you've kept, right? And and now you 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 do this sort of trick, uh, m minus one times. Okay. In other words, you do it for the second line da, 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 to the nth line, and you'll end up you'll end up something like this. Now it's possible you might get rid of more than one uh, variable. So this this symbol here. This coefficient is the first non-zero uh, coefficient in your second equation, and, and so on. Okay, so that's that's the basic idea. So now you've got. Oh, by the way, uh, there's one little thing you need to do be, before you do this elimination approach, and that is if uh, if you if you're given a a system, you know, just in other words, a set of linear equations. And, and if it, by chance, you just happen to be given a, a system where the first equation, the first coefficient is zero, well, that's not very useful. So go looking, go looking, go look for another equation somewhere in the system that has a non-zero uh, x term or x1 term and just just swap the two swap them around because you want you want to have a non-zero uh, first term here in your first line okay. all right so uh, now uh, the second and dot 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 mth line has been reduced you know the, the the x1 term here is no longer there all right all right so now you just uh, keep doing the same process. So forget about forget about the top line for the moment. So now you've got like a new system, a reduced system, a smaller one, a shorter one, uh, where the equations are shorter. So now you just go through the same process again. Now, uh, so uh, so what what you did for this bigger system you'll do the same for for this smaller system and so you will then get uh, so this is the sec so the second line will stay as it is uh, that that second line resulted from your reduction method 
uh, for the first system. So uh, do the whole thing again, uh, a second round of reduction, and your third equation will be reduced again compared to the second one. And do it again, and then your fourth equation will be reduced relative to the third, which is smaller than the second, which is smaller than the first. Right? And you keep doing that until uh, you'll, you'll so the, 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 the length of the equation each time, at each line, gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Uh, and now, depending on how many equations you're given, and how many variables there are, uh, for, exa for example, if, if the number of variables and the number of equations is equal, then the there will be a unique solution unless uh, unless there's an incompatibility. I'll, I'll mention that a bit later. All right. Well, let's. Uh, so we've got where we've got. So this this modified form where um, you've you've taken this set of equations, this system, and you've applied the reduc uh, yeah, the reduction method, and you've got rid in the second and nth to the nth line or equation, you've got rid of the first uh, variable. There's no, there's no x1 in these, these equations, but, but only in the top. Okay, So this uh, new set of equations, this new system, I call it uh, um, asterisk dashed. This, this system, these, these equations, they, they are equivalent, equivalent to the original um, which was two sessions ago. Now, wh what's meant by equivalent? It means they have the same general solution. Right? So equivalent just means having the same solution, or solutions, or general solution. Right. Uh, well, now uh, a couple of other, uh, at least one remark. Um, this process of eliminating step, step by step, line by line, so where each line has uh, one or more uh, variables less per line, and you, you keep you keep getting less and less and less. Now, if you have uh, if the number of variables equal if the number of equations equals the number of variables, then you'll get right down on the bottom line. You'll have one variable and one equation. The, 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 the bottom line equation will just involve one variable, which you can solve. And once, once you know the value of uh, that last variable, you can plug that into the equation that's one line above it, which will contain two variables. And so you can solve for the second variable. And now you know the values of two of the variables, where well, you can plug those two into the third bottom line and solve for the third variable and so on. Okay, so that allows you... Now this, this process of solving these uh, linear equations by, by elimination, the elimination method, uh, I think was, I guess, was invented by Gauss, Carl Friedrich Gauss, who's reputed to be the greatest mathematician who has ever lived. So it's, it's just simply called Gaussian, you know, the adjective, elimination. Right? So what this process I've been describing is called Gaussian elimination. And what we will do next is we will solve uh, a set of non-homogeneous, this, this will be a non-homogeneous system. Remember, non-homogeneous means that at least one of the b's here, one of the constants, of of uh, of the equations is non-zero. In this case, they're all non-zero. So this this system here, this set of linear equations, is uh, non-homogeneous. Right. Uh, now, what else can we remark here? Well, obviously, there are three equations, and how many variables? One, two, three, four, five. So we have three equations and five variables. So to what extent can we solve this system? Um, 
In other words, find values for the five variables x, y, z, v, and w. And to actually, we'll actually uh, solve this using the Gaussian elimination method in the next session. Ciao.